Sometimes in baking, you need a challenge, and this cake is the ultimate American baking challenge. In the USA, it's the deep south that has the sweetest tooth, and this recipe is a native of southeastern Alabama, and it's a true work of art. It's called a little layer cake because it's made up of lots of little layers of sponge, which are sandwiched between the most amazing chocolate frosting. Now, the thing that makes this cake unique is the chocolate frosting. It uses a really old school recipe, which you're not likely to have come across before unless you actually did grow up in Alabama and your grandma used to make it for you. A link to the recipe can be found in the description. Before electric whisks and icing sugar were invented, to make a frosting you'd have to stand over a hot stove. But we home bakers know that the more effort you put into something, the bigger the oohs and ahs from our adoring public. Now for this chocolate frosting, we're going to put some cocoa powder, evaporated milk, and a whole bunch of other ingredients together and boil them up. So you need to lay your hands on a sugar thermometer or a digital thermometer, otherwise it's gonna be a disaster. Okay, so let's take on the Alabama Little Layer Cake. Let's start by preheating the oven to 200 degrees and then grease these three tins with butter. All the way around, get the edges. So I'm gonna grease the last tin and then line all three with baking parchment circles, which should stick down nicely. To make the sponge, whisk together 280 grams unsalted butter, 670 grams caster sugar, and 100 grams vegetable shortening, such as Trex. Now you can use all butter instead of shortening if you want. Shortening is just a retro American ingredient that's gonna give you a slightly fluffier texture to your sponge. Now I'm using a freestanding mixer with a paddle attachment and that's going to take about five minutes on a high speed to get it nice, fluffy and light. Now knock the mixer down a notch to a medium speed and add six large eggs. Yeah, you heard right, but a big cake needs a lot of eggs. Add the eggs one by one. Now that I've added all my eggs, I'm going to stop the mixer and I'm going to take my spatula and Make sure that all the sides are scraped down and all the ingredients are incorporated nicely. And also I'm gonna add some vanilla extract. And give it a little whirl. Take a large bowl and we're gonna combine the dry ingredients for the sponge. Sift in 845 grams of plain flour, one and a quarter teaspoons of salt, two and a half teaspoons of bicarbonate of soda, and six and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Yes, it's a lot of baking powder, but it's a big old cake. Now, sift all the dry ingredients to get them light and airy and mixed, but just make sure you do it over the bowl. We're gonna gradually add the dry ingredients along with 590 ml of whole milk to the butter and sugar mixture. It's best to alternate the dry ingredients with the milk and add each one in turn, so you're gonna go dry, wet, dry, wet, dry. Once it's all added, beat on a medium speed for a minute until smooth and incorporated. Get a spatula down the sides of your bowl though to make sure that all the goodness goes into the sponge. Because we have so many cake layers to bake, it's important to measure out your mixture into your tins so that you don't have uneven layers. Measure out about 230 grams of batter into each one of your tins and use the flat side of a spatula to gently smooth out the tops. The great thing about these layers is they take half the time to cook than a normal sponge does. So while we may have more layers to do, they don't really take that much longer to cook in total. We'll bake each layer for eight to 10 minutes until golden brown. You can test the tops of the sponges. They're gonna bounce back lightly when pressed. Immediately turn them out onto a wire rack when you take them out of the oven. We'll repeat the measuring and baking in the same tins. Use the same parchment for the rest of your cake batter until you get 12 layers. Just be sure to remove any cake remnants that remain from the previous layer that might be baking onto the tin itself. While these first layers are baking, we're gonna make the frosting. Now this cake does nothing in the way that you're used to, so the best thing is just relax and multitask with confidence. So to make the frosting, put a kilo of caster sugar into a large deep saucepan along with 40 grams of cocoa powder. Mix them well and put on the stove on a medium to high heat. Add 150 grams of unsalted butter, which you've cut into cubes, 350 ml of unsweetened evaporated milk, and 120 ml of whole milk. Heat the mixture, but be sure to stir it continuously or it's gonna burn. So you're gonna have to make sure it doesn't boil over here, so this is where the sugar thermometer becomes essential. Bring the mixture up to boiling point, and once it's been boiling for four minutes, reduce the heat to low. Add two teaspoons of vanilla extract and simmer. 
You can come back and stir it from time to time. It's gonna need about seven to 10 more minutes of simmering. Now check your sugar thermometer. You wanna cook it to 110 degrees just before soft ball stage. So finally it's time for the fun part, which is assembling your Alabama little layer cake. Now the frosting is a little sticky, it's a little like glue, but it's gonna hold everything together and make sure your stack doesn't fall apart. While the second layers are in the oven, assemble your first sponge on a cake stand or on a cake board. Always have the top side of the sponge facing upwards for presentation. You can see I've put some foil down to save on my cleaning up. Cover the first layer of sponge and frosting and then stack on the second layer top side up as before. Putting the layers together is actually pretty simple. It's all a matter of spooning and drizzling and spreading and then putting the next sandwich on top. I am cheating a little bit by using a two tablespoon scoop, so I'm putting two on each. And if it seems a bit runny at first, don't worry, it's at softball stage, so it's gonna thicken up as it gets cooler. Now you just have to keep on going with the spreading and the stacking until you've done all 12 layers. So once you've done the last layer, just take the rest of your frosting and put it all over the top and then it's just gonna start to drizzle down the sides on its own. And then help it down a bit if it doesn't start drizzling, it's getting thick now because it's cooling. Look at it, there you go. The sides show, that's fine, it's supposed to be that way. And then just use up all your frosting. The work that goes into this cake is a bit of a commitment. So get your friends to help, or half it and make six layers. It's a beautiful cake. It looks great when you slice into it. It's a real showstopper. Got a burning question? Then leave a comment below. And if you're a baking champ, then post a picture of this finished cake to at Humming Bee Bakery, or post it on our Facebook page. Subscribe if you want another baking challenge, or check out our other videos.